thank you everyone for being here. Um, I want to start by apologizing because I cannot get my webcam to work uh, for some just awesome unknown reason. Um, but you know what, maybe we got all the, the live presentation technology curse out of the way early, right? Everything's going to go smooth from here on out. Um, I did put a picture of myself, you know, in the slides just now, uh, I guess to prove that I'm, I am in fact a real person, right? <laughs> but anyway, so I'm Kyle. Um, I'm the librarian manager, systems and technical services at the California Health Sciences University in Clovis. Um, and this little scholarly snippets here is going to be on Microsoft Word. So we're going to start pretty basic with formatting and styling, um, but we will go into some more advanced features too. So here to my documents. <clears throat> okay, so um, I want to start too by saying that I'm using the Microsoft Word desktop app. Okay, and I know there's other versions, right? So there's the 365 version on the web browser. You can use it in Teams, you can use it on your phone. So there's a lot of different variations. And um, the desktop app is probably the most robust, right? And keyboard shortcuts, all that kind of stuff work. The browser version is similar, um, but I just, you know, there's little differences, right? So you're not going to find all of these probably on the front of this ribbon right here. So this whole thing right here is called the ribbon. Um, you might have to go into these advanced setting buttons to actually find all these buttons, but they're generally all there. It's more keyboard shortcuts, that kind of stuff that may not work um, from the different platforms, but this is the desktop one. So again, this is the ribbon, right? This is pretty standard in all Office um, products, I think, right? And you can see there's different tabs up here that we can go through. And then within the ribbon, each tab, uh, there's these different sections. So we have clipboard, font, paragraph. We're really going to live in the font and paragraph sections and styles today. Um, again, I'm going to start off super basic. Uh, things we've probably all used a thousand times, but I want to keep everybody on the, you know, the same playing field. Just make sure everybody's kind of level there. And then we'll ramp up and get into some more advanced features that I really do think are going to help um, moving forward and working on any kind of Word document, right? Whether it be a paper or a form or anything like that. So. Up here in this font, if you notice right here, there are these little arrows too, okay? You can always click on these to find a lot more settings. I wish I could go through all of these, but it would take me hours, right? So I'm gonna go through kind of the, the, the best ones or the most popular ones, the most useful ones, that type of thing. And if I can expand on any of them too, I will, right? But we're gonna start with just, you know, basic bolding, okay? And if you notice when I highlighted this word, this little quick access bar here came up, um, I'm going to ignore that for right now. Again, I'm going to use super basic <laughs> 101, so we're going to use the ribbon. So if I highlight that and hit this B right here, it'll bold it. Right? Again, we probably all know these. So italicize, we can italicize there. Um, underline, we can hit the underline. If you notice, my underline is a little bit different. So there's a little drop down menu there, and you can change what it looks like. Right? So we can make it dotted and uh, green, something like that. OK, that's cool. Uh, strike through again, pretty straightforward. We can hit the strike through, but if we go to this advanced settings, we can actually make a double strike through, which I'm not 100% sure of the use on that, but it is there. Okay, so just a little bit better of a feature. Um, if we come down to highlighting, okay, we can click on that and then classic yellow highlighting, like we all know. So I did highlight the word first, I selected the word first when I hit it. If you're not selected into a word and you click on that, then you can actually just keep highlighting, right? And definitely without having to select it every single time. And of course, you can change the color too. And then word color, I mean, that's pretty straightforward too. You know, we have our basic black, but we can change it to red. Uh, one cool thing here, if you go to this little drop down menu, you can actually change the gradient, right? So if you want to spruce it up a little bit, okay, make it look more professional or uh, maybe a title of a paper or something like that. You can always change those. Um, at any time, you can use probably my favorite button in all of Word. <laughs> it's this clear formatting, right? So if you really, I mean, the lines are messed up, the colors, everything has just gone completely wonky. You can highlight, the, highlight this and hit clear formatting, and it'll pretty much hit the reset button on everything, right? The only thing it's not going to take off is the highlighting. That's, that's kind of separate, so you can just hit no color. But it's just a really cool feature. But if you notice too, this took it 
all the way back down to the default, right, for this theme. So it's Calibri 11, which is probably the default for most of you too. Um, but we want it to look like this again, right? So we can see that it's 20 font size, all that. But the easiest way is to kind of select this and come up here to this Format Painter. We'll click that, and then we can highlight that, and it'll apply the format of what you selected to whatever text that you're going to highlight, right? So it's a very, very cool feature. I love the Format Painter. We'll probably use it again at some point. Um, you can also copy a format and do a lot of different here. So if we double click on it, we have that copied and then we can just start clicking, right? We don't have to always go back to um, underlining it. So again, just a neat, neat little feature. So let's take those back. So moving on here, we have the sub and superscript. So this is really useful if you're writing any kind of formula or you know, putting in-text citations in the document. That's what we use it a lot for. Um, so the sub, of course, will take it below the, the median line on the text. And then the super will take it above. And one thing you might not realize, you can actually change the size of that, right? I mean, you can even control it, bold, palette size, all that kind of stuff, right? So this becomes kind of useful because if you notice, if I make it too big, it starts dropping this line down. Um, so things on like academic posters, right? If you're listing your references, I mean, every pixel kind of counts on an academic poster. So you can make this pretty small too, to actually not, you know, to save room basically on each slide. Uh, moving down here, so case and inflection. All right, so this button right here, this capital A and lower A, this is a change case. And this is something that gets overlooked a lot too. So you can actually just change whole lines um, or whatever you have selected here. And you can change the casing, the inflection. I mean, they have quite a few different ones, capitalize each word, you know, toggle case all that kind of stuff. So that's just a cool little feature that they that they put in. Um, bulleted lists. So again, this is just another normal feature that I'm sure we've all used here. Uh, there is a drop down menu and you can do whatever you want, right? I uploaded a picture of my face one time and made it the bullet list. So you can define a new bullet and you can choose a picture, you know, choose any kind of symbol. Um, you can really customize that. I think I had the yeah, I had a heart at one point there. So, um, yeah, you, you can customize pretty much anything in Word now. It's, it's really cool. Uh, so the numbered list here, again, pretty straightforward. So there are a lot of things that you can do with numbered lists now. And if you see here, I have some custom ones um, just to kind of prove, you know, the variability of these. So if you go down here to define new number format, so we'll say, let's choose... First, second, third, whatever. Okay, so we can change this. So again, I'll put, I don't know, something random just to show. All right, and it'll change all of them to pretty much whatever you want. Okay, so that's kind of a, a fun feature if you have something custom in mind. Um, I know one thing, so if you have a lot of numbered lists in your document, you know, sometimes they get confused. The numbers will keep continuing or they'll reset, all that kind of stuff. All you have to do is right click on them all right, and you see this this menu pops up, and these three options right here are probably the most important. So you can restart it first, you can continue the numbering if you want, or set a whole number or a whole new number, right? So we can restart this at first, and then it does that, or we come back here, set a number value, and go, you know, whatever you want. So it makes it very easy <clears throat> um, to change this. Okay, so those are kind of the basic things, right, that we probably have all used. Um, maybe a few extra features in there, uh, but we're going to go up to a little bit more advanced stuff here. So um, one thing that I love about Word is that you can actually be in two places at once <laughs> inside the document. So say we're working on our paper here, okay, and we're reading over our abstract, and we know we have a table further down on the paper. There's a lot of numbers, and we just want to check them, right? So we could do the whole like scroll down, check, come back up, all that kind of stuff. But the easiest way, the more efficient way, is to come up here to this view tab. So we'll click on that. And then we want to hit split. Okay. So wherever your cursor is, we'll hit split. And now your paper, same paper, right? It's just split into two different views on your screen. So now you can scroll down all the way to your table and check it over. All right, cool. The information looks good. 
you know, you can click in and change stuff and it'll save on both docs. Again, this is another time where you could use that format painter, right? So if everything down here is a different format for some reason, um, you can get all that, you know, in line basically. So we'll go back to the view and all you have to do is click remove split here to take that away. Another thing too, I have another Word document here. So say you have two drafts of the same document and you're trying to figure out, you know, the differences between the two. Um, if you have them both open here, you can click this view side by side. All right, so it'll open up that document. And then we wanna make sure the synchronous scrolling is clicked. And then you can scroll and it'll actually do the side by side comparison of the documents, All right? So again, this can be super useful if you're trying to compare something or maybe, you know, your research is over here and your paper's over here, but it can be pretty much anything like that. And if we click, arrange all you can also get them stacked on top of each other so again this can be just another really useful view here all right so hit side by side again and we'll snap back to our document here <clears throat> um so next and this is probably my second favorite feature in in word here um it's this paragraph marks button okay so it's, if i click it so what this is showing is non-printing characters is what they're called. So you see this, this paragraph symbol. If I zoom in here, you can see these little dots, right? So every time I hit the space bar, it adds another dot, just showing the spaces in between uh, words. And this paragraph, so every time I hit enter on the keyboard, or, you know, get a new line, it's gonna show that. And if I put something in here and hit tab, you can see the arrows, right? So that'll show you exactly where all the different tabs are or tab location. So this can be really useful for a lot of different reasons, right? Because I know in Word, when you're formatting documents, you run into times where there's extra lines, there's extra spaces. I mean, everything's kind of wonky. If you turn this on, you can generally figure out what's actually happening, right? Kind of seeing like the bone structure of the, of the document. Um, and it's just very, very useful um, for a lot of those reasons. We're going to come back here. So with that in mind, I know a lot of us have probably done this, this next thing right here. So we have our abstract up here. We want our introduction on the next page. So we come up here, and we hit enter a bunch of times, and it's on the next page, right? But then when you come back through and start editing this, all right, so say we add a bunch more. So then you scroll down, of course, it pushed the introduction down. So then you want to delete that bring it back up and it just becomes this constant battle, right? Of course, we deleted stuff, so now we're back up here. So there's a much better way of doing this, controlling your document. So we'll go back to how it was. We'll put our cursor here. So this is where we want the new page to begin. We'll come up here to this layout tab and then we're gonna select the break, okay? And there's a lot of different types of breaks. We'll go through a couple of them right now. With this first one, we're gonna insert a page break, okay? So right off the bat here, you see it shoves introduction down to the next page. And since we have our little paragraph button on, we can see this page break right here. Of course, if we turn that off, it'll go away. But now if we paste something in here, it's not gonna move this at all, right? It's gonna keep it like that. If we go onto that page, it'll shove it all the way down to a new page. And same thing, if we take um, text away, it's not going to, you know, push this up, right? So page break is really, really important, again, for controlling your document. And it can go further than this, too. So say we want to orient something differently, right? So we want one page to be landscape or one section. So this table right here, we want this table to be landscape um, right in the middle of our document. So normally, I know I've seen this a lot, too. People will try to highlight go to orient and landscape, and then everything is, you know, messed up. <laughs> um, but what we can actually do, again, is control this. So we'll put our cursor on top of the, the table, we'll go to layout break, and now we'll go down to section break, okay? So section break, we can hit new page on top of it, and then we'll put one below it. Okay, so we've isolated this now. Works. Hold on one second. Okay, there we go. 
So we've isolated this in the section break. And now if we put our cursor in between there and come up and hit landscape, so then it's just that single page that'll be landscaped. And of course, you can take this and center it and do all that, you know, whatever you want there. Um, but like I said, breaks are one of the most important things that I hope everyone takes away from this because this saves you so much headache when you're um, editing documents and formatting them, right? And you can go even further than that too. And go back to the breaks. We have these continuous breaks, right? So when I hit next page, obviously it shoved everything to the next page. Um, but this continuous break, we'll put one there and we'll put one there. You can chop up, um, you know, in between inside your page without causing it to um, go to a next page and all that kind of stuff. So we'll put continuous breaks. And what this means is you can control everything in between these two breaks um, differently than everything else in the page, right? So normally if I was up here and I, you know, change the margin, all right, it's gonna do that for the entire document. So scrolling up, you see it, it changes it for everything. But if you have these section breaks, go back down here, put up like this, then you can change the margin and it only changes what's inside that, right? So you can really vary how this works. Like this numbered list can be controlled completely different than anything else. You can insert columns that way easier. Um, just the whole host of stuff, right? It just, there's so many formatting errors that happen when you try to do, um, you know, try to change a paragraph and then it changes the whole document, that type of stuff. But if you get really good at using these section breaks, you take all of that worry out of your life, which is really, really nice. Um, let's see, how are we doing on time? Okay, I do still have about 10 minutes, that's good. So let's come back up here real quick and turn off this paragraph here. So one of the basic things um, of Word that doesn't get used as much anymore, which is funny, um, is styles, right? So to me, styling is like the metadata of a Word document, right? So you're naming all these things to make it easier for yourself on the back end, okay? And we're all used to this heading one, which I think I have a lot of heading ones here. Um, but sometimes you don't want it to be blue like that, right? So there's a couple of different things you can do. Of course, you can change it. There's just a lot of different options here, um, depending on your theme. Uh, you can create a whole new style, okay? So we can modify this and you can work through and pretty much make any anything you want, right? The sky's the limit on, on what you can do. But the easiest thing to me, if you never really use heading one because it's you know different color and all that stuff, um, you can right click on it and modify it. And you can modify this just for this document or you can set it to be you know, throughout your word, right? So let's say we want this to be, always be black, uh, 20, and we'll just do that one, okay? So now it changes it there and it changes it for all the different headings. And if you want, you can right click on this too and you can select all the different instances of your headings, right? So it'll just automatically select everything that's considered heading one. And you can do this for anything. So this is the title, right? We can modify what our titles look like, just bold it, just make it completely different. And that's what it'll look like. So this is really useful too, because once you have this completely um, formatted like that, if we come to references, I mean, you can do things like, you know, insert a table of contents, it'll put all your, you know, structure, all your headings, and if you have subheadings and all that stuff, um, so we can do that kind of easy. We can come up to this view tab. And if you see this navigation pane right here, we open that, uh, you see all of our headings are here. So we can jump to these. So if you have a really long document, as long as you formatted it correctly, you can navigate it very, very fast, right? And then this navigation pane too, you can actually click on pages. So this is kind of a cool view that you can go through. You don't necessarily have to have headings for this to work. This is just kind of a, a neat view, right? You can jump around your paper. Um, okay, so that's that. So let's go down and look at images here for the time that I have left. So <clears throat> this is something that I know um, it can be difficult, right? Working with images in Word and it gets, it gets really wonky, but it's actually very, very simple um, to kind of diagnose, especially if you start using the section breaks like I talked about, right? So if you section this off, 
you're probably not going to run into where the image jumps up three pages and, and does all that. But if you notice right here, this little layout options, you know, this is the quick access for that. But as soon as I click on the image, there's a new tab that comes up here, right? So that's picture format. If I click on this one, this was a smart art. So you can see there's smart art design and there's format. There's a, way too many options to go through here, you know, for, for today. So we're just going to kind of live with this, this wrap text. So this is how the text is going to interact with this image. Okay. Um, right now it's set to inline. So it's literally just going to be oops, wherever you put it, it's going to be on this line or it's going to try to, right? So if I drag it to that line, it's trying to start that new line. Um, so this is not the best view, right? So if we open this up, uh, and hit square. Whoops. Yeah, see, I didn't have a section break, so it tried to take it to the <laughs> to the very top. Let's drag that down here. Let's go here. So the section, I mean the the squaring, right? It's just trying to square it into the into the text, so the the paragraphs that it's a part of. Um, and you can do you can move this all around to just to make it wherever you want, really, right? So playing with these options is always good. Um, you can make it tight, right? Which doesn't really matter for a square object. It's probably not gonna really show you anything. You can put it so it's line above and below. Um, I think the square is probably the easiest. And then you can always just reset it to um, inline, right? You can have the text behind it if you want to. Let's see, one back up here. You can have it in front of it, all sorts of stuff. The smart art works pretty much the same way, right? So if we click on this, we can have it squared up like that, and then we can move it around very easily, or um, we can have it tight. So I like to use this triangle here because it's a better visual of what tight actually does, okay? So it's, it's pushing it right up to the point, paragraphs off here. Um, and yeah, so it, it takes the text around it as much as it can, right? Which could be a cool, pretty cool visual effect. Just depends on on what you're going for here. Um, and then, of course, there's through and a line above and below again. We can do that. And then you can always just come back and reset it, right? So something like that. Um, yeah, so that's actually I'm coming up to my time. And I wanted to just not take up the full 30 minutes. But I think those are pretty much the basic uh, formatting tips and tricks and styling tips and tricks that I would suggest um, everyone take a look at. I mean, obviously, this ruler up here can be very, very important, too. And you can click on the View tab, and you can open and close the ruler very quickly. Um, this first uh, triangle up here, if you didn't know, this always uh, commands the, the top line, right? It's the first line of the paragraph, right? That's what it's controlling. And then this bottom one is controlling everything after that in that paragraph, right? And then if you click on here, you can make these little um, tab indents. I can't remember what they're actually called right now, but that'll basically control where your next tab is going to be. So you can make them, you know, very small like that. And then if we turn our paragraph on again, you can see here that they jump accordingly to where those little indents are. Um, but yeah, I think I think for now, that's probably all that I have. And I hope, hope you took something away from this and um, will make your life easier the next time you're making a long document um, or formatting something, you know, make it look, look professional, look amazing. And yeah, just thank you very much. Um, I'll put this up. So Scholarly Snippets is a series. Oh, throw that back over here. And our next one is actually on Tuesday, December 10th at 10 a.m. And it's basic statistical literacy, which we're super excited about. It's going to be a two part series, I think, kind of within the, the week of each other. There's going to be two parts. Um, obviously, statistics is very, very important to learn and it's very hard. So we have an awesome instructor for that. So uh, I think Karen's going to put it in the chat, the registration link, and then there's also going to be a survey link to tell us how we did, you know, to suggest other topics that we can go over. Um, for Microsoft Word, I'm hoping to do more next year, right, to build on this. Because again, this was a very basic level. 
Um, there's a lot of things left to, to go over in Word and all the other kind of their office products. Um, so yeah, 